First of all, allow me to uh, uh, thank the Institute for inviting me here to, I don't know, to speak about what, because I'll address several topics. Um, I'm, I'm a political scientist, I'm sorry, by training, um, and I'm very much interested in some of the institutional aspects of, of sub-national governance, whatever it means. So regional governance, regional development, but also local governance and city politics. And I've been working on several of these topics, and my first sense of being lost was what, when deciding what to say here. That's why I, I also feel lost about this. And I so uh, I decided to choose the three different topics. Uh, and I know I have 20 minutes, and I will present the three topics in 20 minutes. Um, and fortunately, we started with a survey uh, in this session. And I think I selected three of the most common buzzwords nowadays regarding sub-national governance, at least from what my experience as a researcher is in the European landscape. And th those three buzzwords are innovation, sustainability, and smart. Um, and I'll bring mostly questions. So, um, I'm sorry, maybe one a tentative answer in the, in the end, but it's three questions. One is how to govern innovative <laughs> regional environments. Is it possible to combine innovation and regional governance as we know it? Second, is it possible to combine local and the sustainability agenda, all the 17 goals? Is it possible also to combine smart and sustainable city governance? All the three buzzwords and my problems. Uh, let's see if I'm lost. First problem uh, that Alice is facing. Alice for me is the institutions. Uh, in the local governance. So, is it possible to add regions and innovation and if the result is governable or not? I will present in three minutes uh, a very short conclusion of a long, still ongoing research project I'm leading now in Portugal. It's called Center, that's why the symbol is there. It's Community-Led Networks for Territorial Innovation. It makes no sense, uh, but the name is a long one. And because our main um, uh, case study is the center region in Portugal, so it makes sense to use that because they are funding the project also. Um, but don't tell them. Um, so we, are, we were looking and still are, we are still looking at uh, what we call the territorial innovation model of the center region, which is one of the European lagging regions, so still getting a lot of funds from cohesion uh, funding from the European Union, and focusing on um, this interactive process between institutions at the regional level that try to um, create value um, based on territorialized resources, so the resources from the locations. Um, but with a specific characteristic, it is we want to look at the community-led territorial innovation. So, recognizing the central role of collective actors, of, of citizens, of the institutions in this uh, interaction between the entities and delivering public value. Well, this would be a long explanation explaining, presenting all the research, that's the region. Um, we, we are doing a huge survey. We hope we'll be as successful as you were with your survey, uh, but mostly the focus is on policy tools. But I, I'll just, give you, because I have one minute for this, uh, one simple example for my problem, or why I feel Alice is lost, is the fact that the networks um, that aim at delivering innovation in this region per municipality are so many, so overlapping in scope, so complex in the interactions, in the sectors they represent, that in the end, the main challenge is really dealing with the complexity of these networks and not the policy they are delivering. This is just an example of the average number of municipality per network and those darker areas have six or nine municipalities per network. And if we look at the number of actors involved in each network, and the network is a network of institutions, so it's not only the, the one individual, we have well, it's, it's darker, more than 45 uh, member of each network trying to deliver 
policy uh, related thing, innovation related policies like municipalities, uh, um, SMEs organizations, uh, civil society organizations, um, regional government, national government representatives, and so on and so on. My uh, biggest problem is that. Well, as we see it in this research project, like this diversity and the heterogeneous set of public and private actors bring a set of constraints leading to eventually inefficiency in the results they expect. So they bring out coordination problems, they have mixed scopes. It's very hard, as we know, to, to deliver cooperation between or to achieve cooperation between some of these sectors like the public and the private and the third sector a lot of organization overlapping, using the same resources and not always delivering the results they expect. It's very difficult from a public policy perspective, my field, um, to uh, guarantee monitoring and policy evaluation. So the first problem for Alice, one of the institutions, is the overlapping. Is it a threat or an opportunity? So first problem, complexity in the governance. Second problem. Uh, Local and sustainability related to other research projects we are engaged in. Is it possible to add both and have capacity to deliver sustainability at the local level? Well, I will not repeat and read this. We all addressed this during this day. Um, cities are seen as one of the best places to deliver sustainable policies. Cities represent almost 75% of uh, carbon emissions in the world, uh, more than 55% of the population, 65% of the G world GDP. Um, cities are leading the policy regarding um, sustainable development goals, strategies, even against their own states, like the US, it's a good example. Uh, or, well, it's a good example of a bad example, I don't know. Um, but my question is, are, re are cities really able to deliver this? And I'm lo looking, and we were looking at the, at the European landscape. And if, if we really want to see local governance to achieve some of these goals, we have to address some of the challenges local governance are facing in Europe. It's not about sustainable development goals, it's about the way they function. The roles they have, the scale they have, the competences they have, uh, the autonomy they have. It's very interesting to say that we, as a local government, are dealing with this. And we can do a lot of things. But the problem is, do we really have the capacity to uh, make uh, real change? This might be true in some big metropolis. It's not true in Europe. Most of the European, uh, and I, I worked with for the, well, until 2017 in a huge European project, on local government reforms in Europe, most of the European local authorities deal with these three challenges. Um, they don't have the needed interinstitutional governance capacity. They don't have the tools or the knowledge or the instruments or the people to uh, be real boundary spanners, to work across borders, to work with other institutions, which was one of the uh, needed characteristics, tools, to work in some of these goals. They don't have the adequate territorial scales uh, to do it. You know that one of the most common reforms in Europe for the last 40 years was upscaling amalgamations in Northern and Central Europe, promoting intermunicipal cooperation, economies of scale. And if, even though this was one of the uh, biggest trends in the reforms in, in local government Europe, it didn't deliver the the answer we were looking for, because there's no answer to the question, what's the best scale? What's the size of an ideal municipality to deliver policy results, especially these ones, when you're addressing environmental challenges? And finally, autonomy. Um, autonomy is, is a powerful tool, uh, if, or it's a needed tool, if we want to address um, specific environmental challenges with policy discretion or allowing municipalities to decide on their own role and their own future, if they don't have the needed competences, the autonomy is very difficult to do it. And if there's an interesting um, project on local autonomy index in Europe, um, and there's a big difference between, as you know, southern countries, northern countries, eastern countries, and so on. 
Uh, but even those with a higher level of autonomy face this problem of, don't, of not having enough tools to be really autonomous in delivering uh, differentiated policies regarding sustainable development goals. So my problem is there's a normative failure. This is for us political scientists. We don't have a model to include sustainability in the research we've done before. Now we need to include sustainability. But there's also a practical failure from local authorities regarding capacity, scale and autonomy. So second problem regarding sustainability, we still have some doubts of the capacity of local authorities to deliver it. Third one, and I still have five minutes, seven, maybe eight. Oh, seven, that's nice. Third problem, uh, the third buzzword. Everyone speaks about inno innovation, sustainability, and smart cities. That's the future, or was the future. Uh, uh, now we are changing again. Is it coherent to have cities as we know it, and we address that in the previous section, and speaking about uh, smartness of those cities. I'll explain why I think is, this is not so coherent. Uh, we know that city, cities change, and they have changed a lot in the recent future. Now, when we speak about cities, we mostly speak about co-creating space, testing things, prototyping policies, observing new ideas, calling people towards collective action and deciding on the roles and functions of the cities. It's about so many different things like new ways of mobility, thinking cities for eight years old and 80 year old people. It's about new functions of the city, reshaping the city. It's about livability, it's about urban farming, a lot of things that weren't used, uh, or new words we didn't use five years ago, it's about playing with the city, it's a new concept of uh, rethinking space, it's about, and we read a lot of those things, about cities having power and giving more power to the cities, about the happy city, no one said happiness about the, during the survey, I was, it's about the use of technologies, of course, it's about well, old things again, it's about Jane Jacobs and the 60s and the 70s and, and the, the uses of the city, but it's, but it's also about continuous change. It's about, well, and let's add also sustainability, zero carbon, zero waste, healthy ecosystems across all the sustainable development goals. It's about collective action. I'm really sorry for the translation. I'm going too fast, I know. I'll go slow, even slower now. Um, it's about reuse of space. I went fast because that's the way of doing this. It's a way of saying, well, but is it smart, really compatible with all of the things I said about cities? I think there's a problem. That's why I say uh, I'm afraid these two concepts, I know it's not two concepts, but the concept of a smart city is not so coherent as we expect with the cities as we know it in the 21st century. Cities are seen nowadays as informal places, as contested places by different groups, by people, by individuals. It's also a communitarian space, communitarian way of deciding uses, deciding the, uh, the role of the city, of, of place making. But on the other hand, we are introducing new technologies information, data, which is much more structured, data-driven, controlled, a way of providing information in order not to fail, so it's about efficiency and efficacy, when at the same time, on the other hand, we have a city or a place of living where we want things to be more informal, more contested, more changeable, more mutable, I think there's a coherence problem there. Um, so, as I have three minutes, I can go slowly. Um, we are demanding innovation, we are demanding sustainability, smart governance and efficiency, but are institutions at the local and regional level really ready to deliver this, um, able to deliver this? Are they, or on the other hand, because these buzzwords are so wonderful, are they lost in Wonderland, wonderland like, like Alice? 
I will not bring only problems. I think there's a, a so question you are thinking about. So what the hell is he saying? He must say something very positive. Yes, I think there's something we should do about, at least from a researcher's perspective. There are some things institutes like yours can and are doing. It's thinking about some of the main challenges here. And I'm, I'm trying to address this for the last, I'm trying to sell the idea actually, <laughs> no, address this from a research perspective. The, um, the problem um, that these new reforms in Europe on subnational governance and these new buzzwords and problems is bringing about is the problem of governance capacity. We are mixing several sectors, public, private, and third sector. We are mixing several different institutions with different traditions, different languages, different ideas. Um, we are trying to deliver policy through this mixed uh, environment of institutions uh, working together and I think the main challenge is to in this new context to give this new institutional arrangement the capacity to deliver it and from my perspective the governance capacity should be addressed in different in five different uh, aspects of it the first one is regarding efficiency and it's a very it's, I know efficiency is a very difficult con concept to deal with from a social science perspective um, in other in other areas it's easy i also had a training in engineering so i know what efficiency is from an engineering perspective from a social science i have more doubts but for me it's a very simple answer to a very simple question is this arrangement working? Is it acting as it is expected? Is it delivering the policy it promised to deliver? So we could improve the efficiency of this new institutional arrangement. Maybe it be a local authority working with other actors or a regional uh, setting, a network of agents. We just need to check uh, frequently. Is it delivering what it promised? And why not? and we can address it. It's about democracy, second aspect of governance capacity. Um, legitimacy and democratic control over these institutions can foster in some cases or create, in other, create obstacles to the capacity. But we need to check if these instruments of control are, uh, are there in place, what are they doing, are they a way of monitoring activity, of increasing legitimacy, or are they just creating an obstacle? And if so, how to solve this? Third aspect, stability. None of these new governance institutional arrangements at the local and regional uh, um, scale really work if they are built yesterday and they will be dead tomorrow. As some of these policy networks usually <laughs> as it happens usually in, in some of our countries. Stability is something policy needs. Uh, policy makers need it. It needs to be somehow predictable and measurable and accountable, but it's also something citizens need to know if these institutions are working and how they are working and how, for how long they are working. So fourth scope. Um, how many things are they doing? Are these things overlapping with others? Um, are we the best, we, this institutional arrangement, the best one in delivering this, or is anyone, anyone else doing uh, better than us? And avoiding one of those regional uh, innovation problems I brought. Um, so scope is also another one. And finally, finally, also the nature of the institutional structures. I'm, as you can see, a, a little bit institutionalist in my approach, and I confess. Um, so how loose and or integrated are these networks? How autonomous are these new structures from their members? Is this a coherent with the rest of the dimensions? Is the nature of the institutional arrangement we created, addressing innovation or addressing smart cities or addressing sustainability issues, is the, the way we organized compatible with the scope, compatible with the uh, durability of it, compatible with the, with the democracy and accountability aspects of it. So checking the compatibility of these five dimensions is the main challenge of, of new, the new era of local and regional governance in Europe as far as I see it. Forget the myth, this is the advertising section. If you want to read more on governance capacity, you can read it, uh, but forget the advertising. Um, I'll be available for five minutes discussion, I hope, uh, in the end. Thank you very much.